Women's Essentials webinar and live stream event today. Um, first and foremost, we want to thank you all so much for taking the time to join us. We know how hard everyone works and how busy everyone gets, and we really value and appreciate you taking the time to join us today. And we hope you're, that you're as excited as we are for today's session. Uh, let's jump right on in. My name is Matt Saunders. I'll be the overall host of the event today, and I'll be uh, very honored to introduce our panel of speakers here momentarily. Before we do, a couple of quick housekeeping notes. Um, everyone is muted upon entry, so um, you, unfortunately you won't be able to participate in the audio portion of today's call, but we do have the Q&A panel open throughout the session, and we do definitely encourage you to submit your questions to the speakers today as we go through the presentation, and we'll also be sure to save additional time at the end of the session for verbal Q&A with all of the presenters as well. Um, so please be sure to participate in the session via the Q&A panel in the WebEx event here today, today, as opposed to the chat window. It just makes managing the flow of those questions a little bit easier. If you are viewing the session today via the live stream only, we will also have a way for you to participate in Q&A via a Slido event that we have created for the event for live stream attendees as well. Um, let's see, the webinar will be recorded today, and we will be sure to email a link to where you can access those recordings once this session ends today. Um, pro tip, it will be available immediately on the Learning and Certifications Cisco U YouTube channel as well. Um, as soon as the session ends, that will be available for playback. Uh, last but not least, if you happen to have any audio issues throughout the session today, please try the toll-free call-in number as posted in the chat. I'll be sure to post that again here in just a few moments. Typically, that will, will resolve any audio streaming uh, issues that attendees might have. Let's see. All right. I think that does it for the housekeeping notes. Um, as I mentioned, Slido event today. We have poll questions throughout the session today that we'd like to invite you to participate in. The QR code that's currently on the screen and we'll show that QR code again throughout the session. Um, we'll take you right into that uh, Slido event where you can participate in our first poll question for the event. And the first thing that we would just like to know, and I see uh, Hank and Patrick, our, our panelists, scan the QR code. So that's great. Thank you, guys. Um, the first thing we'd like to know is, you know, which cloud provider do you currently work with the most? So that's just a word cloud question. So scan that QR code. It'll take you right over to the Slido event. And I'll be sure to share a link to the Slido event as well once I'm finished here with the opening. And that'll let everybody get in and participate in the, in the polling and the Q&A as well. But um, yeah, so I hope everybody had an opportunity to scan that code, get your phones out. I'll keep us moving, but we'll be sure to show this code again. And uh, I'll share the link to the, in the chat as well. So let's see, let's move on and talk about what exactly we will cover today. Um, first and foremost, we'll cover why Cisco multi-cloud certifications. So what's the position of these uh, specialist certifications in the market today? And why are we offering these certifications now? And our first speaker will speak to that topic. We'll also go through an overview of the cloud multi-certifications and the exam topics themselves. So we'll review those exam topics for all three exams that we'll be covering today. Uh, we will also talk about how these earn specialist certifications as well as count towards your CCMP requirements. And we're very excited to share some upcoming learning paths that are available in Cisco U, that will be available in Cisco U in the very near future to support your preparation for these exams as well. So we'll get into all of those details We'll cover additional certification preparation resources. So we'll be sure to cover the why, the how, and the why, the what, and the how throughout the session today. And like I mentioned, we'll save time at the end for additional Q&A. All right. And with that, I'm sure no one wants to hear me talk much more. So other than having the honor of introducing our speakers, we'll get right into the session. Um, you, probably, you might know all of our speakers today. They're all frequent Cisco Live presenters. 
highly regarded Cisco Live presenters, at the very least, in addition to all of their other career credentials, Cisco Press authors, etc. But I do um, have the honor of, of introducing the full panel today. And first, Mr. Hank Preston, who is a principal engineer with Cisco Systems. And like I mentioned, you probably know Hank already from his many presentations he's done over the years as a technical advocate for the organization, as well as Mr. Joe Clark, who's a distinguished engineer for Cisco Systems and one of our lead technical, um, technical thought leaders within the learning and certifications organization. And I'm very excited to hear from Joe today. And then as well as our lead content advocate, Patrick Gargano, who I'm sure you also know from either his Cisco Live presentations or his Cisco Press authoring work or one of the classes that you might have taken of his as well. Um, so like I mentioned, a great group of speakers today. And with that, Hank, hey, wanna go ahead and take us away. Let us know why exactly we're offering these uh, certifications and how they fit in. Absolutely. I'd be happy to do that, Matt. Thank you so much. And so I am honored to be here with the uh, the wonderful panel that we have, Patrick, Joe, Matt, and the rest of the folks that are kind of helping us online to talk about this latest generation of Cisco certifications. Um, there are, we're, we're referring to these as the multi-cloud certifications, which for me, I really like that idea because I remember years ago when we first started talking about cloud and trying to understand how cloud fit in to all of the different topics that we had, um, I, we, we kind of had this, or at least I originally had in my mindset that cloud was like one thing. It was the cloud. But today, organizations by and large are starting to adopt cloud elements um, from multiple locations, maybe public locations, maybe private locations. Um, and then when you put those together, we get that wonderful hybrid cloud that we have. Um, and it's it's one of those kind of aspects, whenever we sit down to look at building a certification, we wanna make sure that the market fits, that it makes sense, that customers are trying to tackle this. And so we go back to some of the, the folks that do this type of research. So we've got some statistics here that I think are really interesting. Um, Years ago, when I first started in, it, talking about cloud, it was VMs in the cloud, or maybe it was a little bit of applications. Today, we've actually continued to move in past just virtual machines into containerization, and Kubernetes is this massive cloud technology. And so they're saying 85% of companies are going to have containerized applications in production. So it's not just the cloud from 10 years ago. Now we've moved even beyond that. We've got mission critical or mission critical applications being in the public cloud. And a lot of our users for those applications are internal, they're at sites. And so we have to connect public and private clouds together in the same way that we used to build WANs to provide critical mission critical access to our applications across kind of wide area networks with our service providers. Now public clouds have to become part of that. And then, of course, we're bringing things together all over the place to build these multi-cloud solutions that are in place. And so that really is what we're after. Um, Matt, can I, uh, it doesn't look like you made me the presenter to advance. You bet, Hank. Sorry about that. One moment, please. Oh, that's okay. All righty, you're good to go. Thank there you. There we go. Now I can. Now I have control. We're using the cloud WebEx Power. today so that I can, <laughs> I can cloud control my slides. And so that brings us to what we're talking about today, which are these new Cisco multi-cloud certifications. And now cloud certifications is not something new to Cisco. Um, I would like to say occasionally, um, I was one of the involved in some of the earliest cloud certifications from Cisco. We used to have the CCNA cloud and the professional cloud certifications. Um, and so those uh, um, kind of fit the time that was in place, but cloud has evolved so much since then. And so we stepped back and said, okay, we need to make sure that we're providing cloud certifications that meet the requirements for today, meet the requirements that engineers have today. And so as network engineers or security engineers or um, systems and infrastructure engineers are out there, you're building these types of multi-cloud solutions. And so we tried to build certifications that will make you um, marketable for those organizations that are trying to tackle those areas. Um, migration is a big part of this. We're starting to move, we're continuing to move applications to and from the cloud. And so we're tackling how can we handle those types of use cases with these new multi-cloud certifications. Um, generalists, right? I've, I've long been a generalist in IT, but one of the areas that really has helped me in my career is identifying trends 
that are interesting to me that I can focus in on. I can say, okay, that was really interesting. Um, for a while, network automation was a big trend that I dove really deep into. And I kind of set myself aside, kind of set myself um, kind of, uh, uh, I don't, I hate to say set myself above, but right, like highlighted my own skill set by saying, I'm going to focus really hard in this area, network automation. Multi-cloud is another topic and all of the different aspects of cloud is another area where as a generalist engineer, you can find a topic in here that seems really interesting and set yourself apart from the other generalist peers. Because we need to be able to say, okay, this is something that I'm really good at. I'm a specialist in this part of it. And that's what these multi-cloud certifications are really about, is to provide engineers the ability to say, okay, this is the part of cloud that I've focused in on. This is a part of the cloud architecture challenge that's really important to me that I think I have something to offer back to an enterprise and an organization. And that's really how we focused when we built these, this round of certifications. And so let's talk about them a little bit as we go through. And so what do we have? We have three multi-cloud certifications that are out there. And this is, again, different from the last time we tackled the cloud certifications from Cisco, where we had CCNA cloud and we had the CCNP cloud. Now, when we sat down and said, OK, we want to we re-tackle it back out. And one of the things that myself and Joe and Patrick, we all kind of got together and said, what can we do different this time? And something that I really wanted to make sure we did is not just say, well, here's the Cisco cloud certification. Cloud has gotten far too big to be just a certification, right? There's so many aspects to cloud. And so we, so what we wanted to do was say, let's pick use cases. Let, let's pick actual projects, things that engineers are being asked to do by their enterprises and wrap a certification around the skills necessary to do that. And so the first one we had, and honestly, this was the first one we brainstormed over a year ago as we were just starting to think about what these cloud certifications might look like, is the designing and implementing cloud connectivity. The original name for it, but the idea behind this one was, I know I've talked to engineers and enterprises that have these public cloud locations, they have their private data centers, they have their, their branch offices, and they need a way to kind of securely connect those locations together using a consistent mechanism of technology. The idea was nobody really likes to have bolt-ons to their network. And so we wanted to say, okay, how can Cisco help organizations and engineers extend out their basic WAN connectivity to include all of these different cloud resources that are there? And that's the purpose of this enterprise certification is showing and helping engineers here are the skills necessary to extend your network out to the public cloud. And so if that's the type of project you're being asked to do, take a look at designing and implementing cloud connectivity. And then we go to the second one, designing and implementing secure cloud access for users and enterprises. A very, very long title, but a certification that has probably my favorite acronym of all of Cisco certifications right now, SCATS. Right? I just want to go earn the SCAT certification so that I can be like, I'm SCAT certified. I think that's really the highlight of that certification. Um, a secondary highlight is actually what you get to learn how to do with that. When I started working at Cisco, if I wanted to access any of the Cisco applications, the first thing I had to do was to VPN into Cisco's office. I had to open up. Back then, it was like an IPsec remote access VPN connection, connect in, and then I could access email and the websites and the sales applications and all of the, the, the wikis from the BUs and our directory. Like Everything started by saying, well, you have to VPN in. Today, thankfully, I almost never have to VPN into Cisco. And because the security for cloud applications has, has come so far between multi-factor authentication, push uh, authentication aspects, the posture capabilities that are there. Enterprises don't have to rely on the fact that you've connected to a VPN in order to ensure that you're connecting securely and that the data is protected. And that's what SCATS is all about. SCATS is there to help engineers understand how to build the security architecture to provide applications and data access to their users in a more modern kind of cloud-friendly fashion. And so if you're an engineer and that's your job is trying to figure out how to make that user experience better, but still highly secure, take a look at SCATS. Or if you're like me and you just like the acronym, take a look at SCATS for that as well, because there's a lot of value on that side. 
And then our final certification, designing and implementing Cisco Service Provider Cloud Network Infrastructure. We are getting pretty good at making nice, long, descriptive titles for our certifications. Yeah. But this certification is after those engineers that are actually building cloud infrastructure, maybe to be a private cloud for your enterprise, or maybe you, like the, the title implies, you're, you work for a service provider building a private or a, a public cloud to offer for your customers. This is the certification for you. And it looks at how to take advantage of all of those network automation, infrastructure as code, um, infrastructure as a service technologies, modernizing um, programmatic aspects, and how can we get better at real-time telemetry and streaming information. All of that comes in because we're starting to need to build and manage our infrastructure differently. And so while this one, and we'll talk about how it's in the service provider track, um, I personally think that this is an excellent certification for any infrastructure engineer who is being asked to try to build private cloud or be more automated in your own infrastructure area. And so those are our three multi-cloud certifications that are there. And as you can see, each one of them is tackling a different part of the cloud kind of ecosystem, the cloud use cases that are there. And so to dive deeper into these and kind of look at the blueprints, understand what technologies are in there, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Joe Clark, and he's going to kind of take us through each one of those so that we can see what's in place. And so Joe, get ready for that. But before, right, our second poll question, I've introduced you to our certifications, what's out there, which one of them is the most interesting to you? And I know it's going to be SCATS because it has a great name. Oh. But by all means, feel free to vote for another one that's out there as well. And so go ahead and place your vote. We'll leave the QR code up here. And now I will fully officially hand it over to Joe to talk to us about each of these certifications that are there. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Hank. It looks like I am the presenter. Um, so, yes, as Hank pointed out, um, he talked about the, the high level, the overview, the focus areas for each of these exams. But let's take a little slightly deeper look um, into each one of the blueprints or the set of exam topics um, that you're going to face, that you're going to have to study for in order to pass these exams. And this is an auspicious date, uh, September 20th, because as you can see, this is the first date to test on the ENCC, on the Designing and Implementing Cloud Connectivity exam. So right after this webinar, after you see me break down the blueprint for it, you're going to schedule your test, drive out to your testing center, and be the first to be ENCC certified, because today is the day. So class, first of class all- Class of 23, right, Joe? <laughs> exactly. Class of, cloud class of 2023. Uh, for anyone who has not had any experience with a Cisco um, blueprint, exam blueprint, or publicly we kind of call it the exam topics, I'll explain kind of how to read these things. Um, because I wish I had known when I, uh, I, I first got certified back in 99 for CCIE, and I had no idea there was an exam blueprint um, I just learned or heard from other people talking, ah, oh, you got BGP on there, OSPF on there, this, that, and the other thing. I wish I would have known more formally, not just what was going to be on the exam, uh, but at what level I need to study. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but you can see here, these are the, the domains we call them, the high level, or top level things you're going to need to know around designing and implementing cloud connectivity. You're gonna need to understand uh, things about architectural models, some cloud design or connectiv cloud connectivity design, um, making those manifest or very concrete in IPsec and SD-WAN connectivity. And then there's gonna be some operational considerations to take uh, into account. And um, in a second, we'll, we'll look a little bit deeper here. The percentages that you see on the uh, right-hand side here, um, those are relate to how I don't want to use the word important, but I am going to. Important each one of these domain topics are. This is in the scope of the exam and in the, in the number of questions on the exam, you can expect 15% of those questions to be from architectural models, 15% to be from design, 25% each to be from the, the types of connectivity, either IPsec or SD-WAN, and then 20% from operation. Uh, I didn't add these up beforehand to make sure they all add to 100, but we have uh, very, we, ha we have a dedicated group of what we call psychometricians who ensure that this all adds up to 100. 
So this would mean that if you're if you're studying for these exams and some of the other, uh, we'll get to the other blueprints in a second. Some of the others, uh, we go down to, to the lowest of 10%. You might think, well, I really understand IPsec and SD-WAN dynamics in terms of cloud. I, I feel very confident about that. Um, operation, yeah, I've, I've, I've gained some operational experience. I've done some troubleshooting of this. I feel somewhat confident there. Um, architectural models, yeah, I get why we went with the cloud, but design, eh, maybe you're, you're a little soft there. That can either be a, something that, that tells you, I want to go study that more and get more proficient, or you might say, you know, I'll get really good at some of these other things, and 85% is still most likely still passing. So those are some of the trade-offs when you're looking at this to understand how, you, how to prepare, how to, how to get yourself set up for success with these exams. And it's not just the multi-cloud, uh, the three certifications we're going to be talking about today that follow this model. All of Cisco's career certifications, be it the CCNA or the associate level, all the way up to the CCIE or expert level, they all have blueprints. They all fall into this type of, of modality. We do this in a way that, that we, we work with standards bodies in the industry to make sure our exams are defensible, to make sure they meet a high level of rigor. And so we publish all of this information um, so that there's, we're, we're not trying to, to pull a fast one on you. We're really trying to give you as much of the information up front so you can prepare for success. So since it is the first day to test, and like I said, everyone after this webinar is going to go and definitely sit for the ENCC exam uh, and hopefully pass. These are the detailed uh, exam topics. So this is out on cisco.com and these blueprints or exam topics, they've been published now for a while. Um, this isn't the first time that you could have seen the ENCC topics. Um, this, they've, they've been out for a few months now. Um, we've been getting people ready and because it's the first day to test, we're, we're we're now being, uh, as the Simpsons called it, super liminal. We're, we're, we're yelling at you, uh, we have these exams, you can go test. So when we, when we double click or we expand the architectural models, see still 15%, you could see what some of those architectural models entail. Uh, when you did the, the first uh, poll, I noticed that some people, a lot of Azure, AWS, there was some GCP, um, some other clouds. I, I, I like to see things like DigitalOcean and Vulture there. Those are interesting. I, I, I personally make use of some of those. But you can get an idea of what we're trying to get at here. Um, and, and something else I'm going to point out in a second. But you can see that we want you to describe private uh, connectivity to these clouds. What does it mean to connect your, as Hank, it's not a bolt-on network. What does it mean to extend your network into some of these public cloud services? Uh, what kind of consideration do you have to have around uh, doing things geographically based? Uh, if you want to co-locate some of your gear into some of these environments and make sure you have that connectivity between them, uh, what type of networking or internetworking do you have to have uh, in order to provide the level of, of access to the services that you require? Um, the thing I wanted to point out is the verb. This is one of the other things that uh, we get to, and, and you'll see in any one of the exam topics or blueprints that you read, you'll, you'll always see a verb there. At the expert level, we kind of assume a, a specific set of verbs, so you may see more nouns and, and, and less verby text there, but anything below that, you will absolutely see these verbs. The verb here in all three of these subtopics is describe. So when, you're look, when you sit for the exam, the multiple choice, the drag and drop, the, um, uh, uh, the, the matrix type questions you get here will be around describing these elements. Can you describe, say, internet-based connectivity to cloud providers? Can you describe what that means, how that might work? Um, you don't have to configure it here. You don't have to know specific commands or, or, or specific um, uh, ways of, of making that happen. You have to describe how that, con or describe what that connectivity is, how that connectivity works. It's at a very, what we call low level uh, of cognitive complexity. As we go further down, we get to things in say domain two that step that up a little bit. 
In domain two, the verb, most of the verbs here, there is a describe, most of the verbs here are recommend. So for example, you would have to recommend the connectivity model to provide high availability, resiliency, service level agreements and reliability based on business and technical requirements that you're given. So questions there are going to have you going to list some, have a scenario, going to list some options and based on the requirements presented and the delivery, the, the output that you need to provide, what would you recommend? That's going to be the thing that you would have to do. It's a little bit higher technical complexity or cognitive complexity than just describing or explaining something. You have to make a decision. You have to recommend something. As we move forward into domains three and four, this gets into implementing that connectivity. Now we, 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 we understand at an architectural level, at a high level, this is the type of connectivity these public clouds provide, IPsec, SD-WAN connectivity, but can you do it? Can you actually configure this? So now we get to configuring IPsec. Uh, internet-based secure cloud connectivity or configure Cisco SD-WAN internet-based secure cloud connectivity in these providers. The questions that you would see here relate to specific commands, um, specific things that you would have to implement perhaps on the public cloud side or on the on-prem side in order to make sure that these uh, connections come up and in all cases, in order to make sure they come up securely, that we've created this secure cloud uh, connectivity or interconnectivity uh, between multiple clouds. And knowing things like, how would we do the routing there? How would we configure that routing there? How would we configure the policies in SD-WAN? Um, so this is, again, another level, a higher level of cognitive complexity. Can you do that? So as you're studying, this is where you're going to have to apply that hands-on practice. Can I actually configure this? Uh, can I configure IPsec connectivity, say, between my on-prem uh, environment and one of these public clouds? Could I do it between public cloud instances uh, for whatever they're calling it, like VPC instances in these clouds? Can I do that? Could I actually make that happen? That's the level of study and preparation that you're going to have to do. It doesn't always work out that as the domains get higher, the cognitive complexity gets higher. We usually intersperse. So you might see something that's fairly high, like a configure in domain one. It just, this is how they, 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 they landed specifically here. Because when we get down to domain five, the last domain, the NCC, we're now at well, the, the highest cognitive complexity you'll see here, and that's diagnose. In the operational world, you have to do things like diagnose IPsec, internet-based secure cloud connectivity. You have to diagnose routing issues, diagnose SD-WAN issues. This is similar to troubleshoot, but with diagnosing, you're expected to identify problems. You're given data. You're given, say, CLI output or web UI or um, cloud dashboard type output. And you're saying, given this, what do you think the problem is? Troubleshooting, while it may sound like very similar, very specifically in the exam world, when we say troubleshoot, we also mean we expect you to fix it. Here, the verb is diagnose. So the questions will really be around identifying the issue. Can you, based on data, based on experience, can you identify the issue that's happening? You don't have to necessarily fix it. You, you might be able to fix it, but we're not going to test you on that. It's about identifying that issue, finding the problem, uh, that, that kind of problem needle in the, in the haystack of data. But these are the, the things on which ENCC is going to test you on. And you can see that from a, uh, a waiting standpoint, where we have those higher levels of cognitive complexity around actually being able to create cloud connectivity, secure cloud connectivity, and being able to operate that connectivity, being able to identify those problems that you could see, those present the bulk or represent the bulk of the exam. That's where you really want to spend your time and spend your focus to be successful. Now, the, any of these, any Cisco exam, an exam isn't a teaching tool. It's an assertion that you have the skills. It's an assertion that you've been able to practice this and you can demonstrate these skills. 
The important thing is having the skills. And so that's why you can see the bulk of this exam, the, this particular exam is around, can you implement this? Can you diagnose this? Because those are the real pertinent skills in the industry that your employer, your organization, that's what they want you to be doing. They, they want you to be able to configure that. They want you to be able to make them successful in this inner cloud or multi-cloud story. Uh, and so our exams are going to reflect that. So that's what I wanted to go over. And, and we're not going to dig this deep on, on the remaining two, but I did want to give you that little overview so you can understand how to prepare. And because it's the first data test here, we'll spend the time on ENCC. So that's the first exam. The next exam we've got uh, is Hank's favorite, SCAS-T. Um, I hate to tell you this, Hank. Uh, I hate to tell you this. There's, there's a... Um, there, there's a, a, a movement to get this name changed, to get this, this acronym changed, but, but hopefully Hank, Hank will be the first to test Boo. Uh, Boo. Uh, the SCAS-T uh, uh, certified individual here. So it's the same thing, Blueprint. It's got a set of domains. This has six, ENCC had five domains. Um, no domain is less than 10% in terms of the weighting, but we can see there are two domains here that are 10%. So you can determine whether or not, how, how you want to study, how you want to prepare. Like with ENCC, we have an architectural domain. So can you talk about cloud security and that cloud security architecture and what you have to know there? When we were working on this uh, blueprint for this exam, uh, we got together and, and a number of us talked at SMEs. I wouldn't say that I'm really the, a subject matter expert here, but I had thoughts. And one of the things we wanted to make sure of was we set a good scope on this exam. And you can see in the title, it says designing and implementing secure cloud access for users and endpoints. That last part was important because Hank mentioned Kubernetes. There is an application centric approach to this we could do where we have multiple microservices or multiple application components and they are living in cloud, in the cloud or maybe in multiple clouds and they also need to communicate securely. We didn't want to over inflate the scope and bring that in as well. We wanted to tie this to those users and endpoints. So when you see domain two, that's user and device security. And Hank mentioned back in the day, uh, we had to get on with a VPN and it was truly an IPsec uh, VPN. And we've had all the hilarity ensue where ESP ate up all our NAT translations and blah, blah, blah. These days with zero trust, we can have a, a much nicer experience whereby if I'm here at home or I go into the office or I'm traveling on the Starbucks, I can still get access to all of my services. I can get access to all of those services securely because I'm using, and, and here's where the second part of this domain comes in, because I'm using that trusted device. There are policies that we can have, management and control that we can have over our device. So what I have, me as the user, who I am, that allows me access regardless of where I am. And the cloud makes that a little bit more seamless because we're not having to deal uh, with that VPN overhead. So that's what domain two is going to get into. Domain three is going to be talking about then, okay, so now that we've got the user and the user's device secured and connected, how do we make sure that the, the clouds, uh, cloud-centric services those, the security to those that the user is accessing, that that is secure, that the policy is written in such a way or policies are written in such a way um, that the user, say Joe, can access everything that he needs that based on the level of, of data privacy that's needed, that, that he's accessing that correctly. Um, very quick example there, I might have a policy that I log into cisco.com, the public website, I can do that from a public machine or a shared machine, or I can do that from a trusted machine. Whereas if I go to one of our internal sites, one of our, our uh, more secure or restricted sites, I can only log into that. The network centric policy state that I can only log into that from a trusted device. While we're um, not talking about the 
inner workings of the application, meaning device or application component A communicating with application component B, we do want to make sure that the application and very particularly the data security um, is taken into account. And I mentioned that we want to make sure that anything that uh, any data that is like highly confidential, restricted, that we're, we're sure that we have the right policies in place to be able to not only restrict access or, or secure access to that, but then we can monitor and we can see how our policies uh, are behaving. So that takes us from domain four into domain five. It's one thing to say, yep, I believe Joe only has access to these particular sites from a trusted device. It's another thing to prove via the visibility and assurance that that is in fact the case. And to look for things that might be anomalous, to, to look for outliers. So the visibility and assurance that we have to make sure our policies are working correctly, um, that make sure that, that who's accessing what, and that we have some, some auditing and records there, that goes into naturally we're going to start to see those outliers we're going to start to see the potential threats and we want to make sure that we can respond accordingly now you see that the threat response there is 10 percent obviously this is security with the cloud we want to make sure that we can recognize and and, and, and respond to those threats but we have a whole other track uh, related to cyber security so that's going to go, that track is going to go much deeper into these elements, but there is a little bit of that crossover, and that's why you see that 10% there of threat response. So for now, uh, that's uh, SCAST, SCAST, that's uh, it, it, while it stays, test now, Hank. Uh, actually, when can you test? When can Hank become certified here? That won't, won't be into for another two months on November 20th. That will be the first day to test there. Um, so for those of you in the U.S. who want to get a certification out of the way before you uh, indulge yourself on Turkey, this is one thing you can do, uh, you, can, you, you can make use of. The final exam uh, blueprint we want to go through, and this is, again, another two months out from uh, SCAS-T. This is January 20th. This is my favorite. So I like this because I, I feel like it, it, it gets to... Uh, there is some level, especially when you get into service assurance and, and op optimization, that gets to my operations and network management background. But this is designing and implementing Cisco secure, uh, Cisco service provider cloud network infrastructure. This is cool because some of the other things I saw in that first poll were really around a private cloud, like you're, you, you're either using it with your service provider or maybe you're building it yourself. And this gets to how would I build my own cloud? If I'm a service provider, how would I build a cloud that I can serve to my customers? And how can I make sure that cloud can connect to what they might have on-prem, what they might be using in the public cloud space? So this first talks about a virtualized architecture. How do we bring everything up and do things like network function virtualization and, and other component virtualization? And then how do we interconnect everything? How do we provide that cloud-centric thinking and cloud-centric model? We have to make it highly available. The last thing we want to do is have our cloud show up on the news because it went down. So how do we make sure that we have like regional availability? How do we make sure that we have service level availability? Security is pervasive. Yes, we have an exam dedicated to security in the cloud, but I also mentioned in ENCC, there's how do we make sure that connectivity is secure? Well, how do we make sure our cloud infrastructure that we're building is secure? So there's a domain here about security. And as I mentioned, my favorite domain around service assurance and optimization. It's, it's understanding what's happening in our cloud environment, uh, automating uh, with that, and being able to make uh, continuous and consistent improvement based on what we see from that assurance data. So those are our three, a little bit of a deep dive. Again, everything is following the same modality. You bring these up on cisco.com, you'll find the same type of verbs here for uh, SP, um, SPCNI, SCAS-T. Um, so that can help you get prepared for these exams. And before we get into the training that's going to be available, we have our next polling question. Which technology do you need to study the most to be ready? So of these exams, of these domains, pick one that you think you want to go after. Which technology do you think you'll have to study the most? Scan the QR code um, 
answer as you will. And I'll hand things over to Patrick, who's gonna go through the learning we're putting forward uh, in support of these certifications. Thanks, Joe. Uh, let's see. Right, so we've, we've learned that there's three new certification exams, one for enterprise, one for security, one for service provider. You probably have an idea which one you're already thinking you want to get ready for, but obviously the next question is, how do I actually get ready for this? What do I need to study? And, and as Joe was saying, maybe there's some areas that you feel comfortable with and some other areas that you need to brush up on. So obviously we need to provide you with some training for these three certifications. So that's what we've done. We've created basically what we call a learning path for each one of these. So we have a learning path for ENCC, we have a learning path for SCATs, and we have a learning path for the service provider exam as well. Um, and so we're gonna look at all of those in, in just a moment. And, and just to give you a little idea, the, these learning paths, we, we build them and then we're gonna push them out to Cisco U. Cisco U is our new learning platform. Um, this is where you'll be able to consume this content. And um, this is where also our labs are integrated as well. So all our hands-on labs get kind of um, spun up and, and you access them directly from, from Cisco U. Having said that, these learning paths will also be available for um, our learning partners so that you can take this kind of training uh, in person uh, with an instructor as well. So let's have a look at each one of these um, and start with uh, ENCC. So again, what I'm doing here this, uh, this afternoon with you is giving you a very early look at what the learning paths um, are going to look like for each one of these. Um, this first one is going to be probably available around November, so in a, in, in a couple of months. Um, and what you're going to quickly notice, if you, if you remember what the blueprint looked like, um, there were five domains, and so we've built the learning path like that as well. And I just want to explain something also about this learning path. So um, when we build a learning path, we then break up the learning path into tracks, and then each little box within a track is a course. Um, and so that's what you've got there. Across this learning path for ENCC are the five tracks that map to the five domains that uh, Joe was talking about earlier. So that first track is all about the architectural models for, um, for cloud and cloud connectivity. So the courses there focus on, you know, what is a public cloud if you're not familiar with that concept? Um, how can you connect to it either through the internet or through private connectivity? And then how are we deploying our, our SaaS applications and connecting to those SaaS applications as well? And what I'd like you to keep an eye on as well as we go through all these little boxes is I've, I've mentioned in the different courses where you'll find some hands-on labs as well. And so that's gonna come up quite a lot throughout these three learning paths that we're gonna look at. So that was track one. Track two was the design uh, domain, if you remember. So this is where we're asking you to have a think about how you would recommend um, building out uh, you know, cloud connectivity. And so the, the, this whole second track is all about that, having a look at making sure it's highly available, you know, redundant, resilient, et cetera. Um, you need to put out um, and build out some policies, some security policies for that cloud infrastructure as well. And, and obviously there's some compliance issues that you need to keep in mind as well. Now, the, the interesting thing with that second track, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with the ENSLD course. It's our CCNP Enterprise design course. In that course, uh, we don't have any like hands-on, you know, configure router, configure switch. It's a design course. And so what we have in that course instead are case studies, if you like. And so what I thought would be really good for the second track was to come up with, and this kind of speaks to what Joe was talking about earlier, Remember that that design domain, it was all about recommending, recommending. So we came up with a case study where you'll be able to work through, you know, meeting a client, gathering the requirements from that client, and then recommending how they should upgrade and build out their, ne their, their network infrastructure to connect to AWS or Microsoft Azure. So we call that a design case study, and that's part of that second track. Track three and track four are, uh, as Joe was saying, where you get your hands dirty. Um, this is where you start actually configuring stuff. So track three was all about building native IPsec tunnels to your cloud providers. So we have a look at that in that first course. And then in the second course, the uh, Cisco overlay routing is all about building your um, routing peering sessions, you know, either through OSPF or BGP with those um, devices that are running up in the cloud. The other thing I just want to quickly mention, and, and you probably noticed it as well when Joe was showing you the blueprint, is that we keep mentioning you know, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and GCP. And those are the three that we focus on throughout this entire learning path. So anytime we talk about 
internet-based connectivity, you know, routing, uh, SD-WAN, we're talking about establishing that connectivity up to those three providers in particular. And that's to get you ready for that exam. So that track four, um, so track three, as I said, was all IPsec. Track four is all about SD-WAN. So configuring your SD-WAN tunnels, configuring your policies, configuring routing, and obviously configuring security. So this is leveraging you know, cloud on-ramp for multi-cloud. It's leveraging um, cloud on-ramp for SaaS as well for direct internet access. And then track five, Joe was talking about, it's all about diagnostics. It's all about troubleshooting. And so that's what we're focusing on here as well. So this will be scenario based. It'll be, you know, something's broken. There's a problem with something. I can't establish my OSPF connection uh, and I need to figure that out. And so that's what that, that fifth track is all about. So there you go. So that's a very quick overview of what the learning path is going to look and, and feel like for, for ENCC. Um, I have a couple more teasers to share with you then um, while, while we're at it. So I, I mentioned that, you know, let me just go back to the previous slide. Hopefully you've noticed that la the word lab appears quite often throughout the course. Um, and and I, I keep talking about these hands-on labs. So I just want to quickly show you what the lab topology will look like or does look like for, for ENCC. Um, it's very similar to the topology we use for some of our other SD-WAN courses, like ENSDWI, for example. Uh, just a little simpler, a little smaller. So we've got a few locations that are already running SD-WAN. Um, so the data center, branch one, branch two. We've got branch three that's running kind of traditional IPsec and will get migrated and added to the SD-WAN fabric later on. We've got our cloud providers connected to our two transports, you know, obviously through the internet. And then we have our MPLS transport. Um, and notice there's a Cisco umbrella uh, service running there as well. And so that's the lab topology that we've put together to, um, to service the labs for, for ENCC. And you can, you can see the list of, of the labs that we're going to be um, working on for, for that, that learning path as well. I'm not done with the teasers. Um, what, I would, what I thought I would quickly do is sh actually show you um, what some of the content looks like for this learning path in Cisco U. So obviously the first question is, do you know what Cisco U is? Uh, as I said earlier, it's our new learning environment, new learning portal where you can consume all kinds of courses and content, not only Cisco, but partner content as well. Um, we've got you know, certification aligned content like CCNA and Encore and NRC and you know, collaboration stuff and security stuff and data center and service provider. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like in case you've never been in Cisco U. Um, and, and to show you actually what the, the content will look like if you, if you go in there and, and start studying, um, studying the, the ENCC content there. So what I have open right now is, if you remember that first track, the last box, it was called SAS Connectivity. So I opened that course in particular. And I just want to show you what this looks like. So on the right here, we've got you know, a bunch of topics for that course. Um, and you'll notice right away a video. So um, we got my colleague Ahmed, who's absolutely fantastic to record topic Hello videos. Hello welcome. This is Ahmed Mofta, and we're gonna be talking about centralized internet gateway. From the networking standpoint. So Ahmed's got the smoothest voice, almost as smooth as Hank, um, and he does just these fantastic engaging videos. So he's already started to record videos for our content for ENCC, and basically as we create the content, he's following behind us creating the videos at the same time. So that's how we're hoping to be able to hit that target of, of, of November release for, uh, for the entire learning path. I'll give you a little, um, little heads up. So we've got track one and two finished terms of content creation. We're about halfway through three and we started on track four. Um, so it's, it's, it's going pretty quickly. And so let me just finish scrolling through. So this is what the content looks like. Got some text, obviously, some visuals to kind of help explain what the text is talking about. And then typically towards the end of a page like this, you'll get a content review question or just something to kind of think about um, in terms of what that content uh, discussed uh, in, in, in that particular page. And then the last little teaser I want to leave you with is, is actually what the labs look like. So um, this is one of the this is the first lab in the learning path. So it's at the end of track one. And it's just a, a very simple lab to allow you to kind of familiarize yourself with the lab environment um, and kind of explore it a little bit through CLI connectivity and through GUI connectivity. And so this is what the page looks like. And, and you see this magic button here, initialize lab. So I'll just take two seconds to explain what this is all about. So when you take one of our courses, um, and, and it has hands-on labs. There's a couple of different ways our labs work. We have different lab environments. Um, if you've taken a CCNA or Encore or an RC, 
you know you click that initialize button and the lab is available within five or 10 seconds. It's running IOL routers and switches. So it spins up the topology super quick and you can get into the lab. If you've taken any of our SD-WAN or DNA center courses, you know that those labs take five to 10 to 15 minutes to spin up because there's a lot of controllers, uh, routers to spin up um, and, and some, some quite substantial VMs as well. For ENCC, when you click the initialize button, the lab is available immediately. These are always on labs. And basically when you click the initialize button, it will bring you right away into the jump host for the lab environment. I don't know if you remember, I was showing you the topology earlier. There was like a little jump host connected at the top right. So the jump host is how you as a learner gets access to the lab environment. And right now I've got basically, you know, vManage open. Um, and this is, this is not a screenshot folks, okay? This is like re the real lab environment, right? These are the, the real device names and, you know, Catalyst 8KV and real controllers. Um, I, I can even connect also through um, CLI and, and access, right? The VBON device and, and, and run some commands. And so basically what the lab looks like from Cisco U is that once you click initialize lab, you then scroll through um, and then basically go through the different steps that the lab is asking you to do. And this is basically what, why I opened the putty and why I had vManage open is because that's what, what they get you to do in this particular lab. They get you to access vBond, you know, do a few show commands and, and, and kind of guides you through the, through the lab. So there we go. That was my very quick brief teaser for what the lab's going to look like, what the content looks like, what some of the videos that our buddy Ahmed is putting together for us as well um, that you'll be able to consume through, um, through Cisco U. All right, so briefly, um, let's wrap this up with a quick chat about SCATs and SPCNI. So if you remember, um, between the three blueprints, the, the security blueprint was the biggest one. It had six domains. So we've got six tracks here. And this is a subs very, very, it's a substantial blueprint. And so that translates into a substantial course. It covers a lot of stuff. Um, so we've got the same tracks as the domain. So we've got that architecture track to start us off with, where we look at the different types of security architectures, for example, safe. Then the second track was all about authenticating and posturing for, for the user and the device, right? Is that device allowed to connect to the network? Is that user allowed to connect to the network? So using uh, things like Duo here, leveraging ICE and, and SSO. Track three is more about securing uh, access to the cloud applications themselves. So here we're using a lot of umbrella, for example, um, focusing on direct internet access um, and obviously looking at um, you know, policies for SaaS applications as well. Track four is um, you know, securing the access to the applications and the data specifically, right? That, that's being hosted there. So um, if firewall, um, secure, uh, sorry, Cisco secure workload and, and uh, enforcement agents is there as well. We look at MITRE attacks um, and again, policies for, for securing the, the multi-cloud connection. I think you're uh, not showing it to us, Patrick. Oh my that's goodness. That's why. Okay, did I lose? Um, did I lose the ball perhaps? Can, can we, we check on Patrick's presenter skills or presenter role? His skills are fantastic. I didn't mean to imply <laughs> the, the skills were in question. Okay. Can you see the slide now? Is that slide? now? Okay, fantastic. Looks okay. Good. Listen, yeah. So, so you know, track one is architecture, as I mentioned. Track two is about authenticating the user and, and the device. Track three is more about, you know, the, uh, securing access to that cloud application. Um, track four about data security. And then track five is all about visibility and assurance. And I want to point something out at Cisco Live last uh, last year. Was it last? It, was, it feels like last year. It wasn't last year. It was like a few months ago. Um, they announced Cisco XDR, and so we, we decided to add it in here as well um, as a as a as an extra bonus. <laughs> it's not officially in the blueprint, but we wanted to give it um, get, put it in there right away um, from from the get go. And then track six was the one that that Joe quite liked, all about you know, uh, responding to, uh, to different threats. But like you said, it kind of overlaps a little bit and, and, and links itself to the, the, the cyber security um, certifications as well. Again, I, I just want to quickly point out all the different labs that appear throughout, um, throughout this, um, this learning path as well. And you can see we're, we're planning or targeting kind of a February 2024 um, uh, general availability for this learning path. 
Okay, so the last one is the service provider one. So, so this one was a, a smaller blueprint, so a bit of a smaller learning path, only four tracks here. We were able to combine everything logically into four tracks. Track one was all about architecture, and, and Joe mentioned stuff like NFV, uh, and also focuses here on NSO, so Network Services Orchestrator. Track two, um, it, it kind of looks at some of the things covered in ENCC. So what I mean by that is, you know, what is that that um, cloud connectivity like, either from an internet perspective or from private connectivity, but also focuses on things related specifically to service provider networks. So MPLS, uh, segment routing, and obviously interconnect solutions that are available as well. Track three um, is about security. So we're looking at control plane security, data plane security, um, security policies within the service provider network and a bit of compliance and regulatory stuff as well. And then track four um, is, is quite a substantial one. This is one that combines a couple of domains actually. So it's the one that focused on high availability within the service provider network. Um, so there's quite a lot of labs there. We have a case study possibly as well. Um, and we also look at optimization and monitoring of the, um, of the service provider network. This one is we're targeting kind of later in the spring of 2024. And so, again, you might have noticed my little um, little little note at the bottom of each slide there. It's quite possible that this learning path, you know, changes as we as we continue working on it. We haven't actually started the development of the content. This is just in the design phase. Um, if I go back to the previous one here, we've already started with the content development for track one and track two. Um, and so this this one will will probably stay as is, but it's quite possible that this um, service provider one might, might change as, as we go through it. So there we go, folks. That's a very quick overview of the content that we're building for you that'll be available in Cisco U and for our learning partners so you can uh, take in-person classes. So here's a, your Slido for, um, for this topic. Um, which training do you think you would be the most interested in? Um, and while you're at it, maybe let me know what kind of subscription you're currently using for Cisco U. Um, is it the free, is it the essentials, or is it the all access? And I think I'm gonna hand it over now to Hank to bring us home. Absolutely, thank you so much, Patrick. So we, uh, we had so much great stuff to jam into this presentation and this webinar. So we're not gonna have a ton of time for the live Q&A coming up. However, we have been keeping very active in the Q&A panel. So keep those questions coming and we'll, make, we'll, we'll see what we can end up with. But as we come to the end of this, one thing that I wanna kind of dive back in and kind of reiterate is each one of these three new certifications that we've talked about, that we saw the blueprints, that Patrick talked about the training, each one of them is a concentration exam or a specialist exam that's part of one of the existing CCNP tracks that are out there. So enterprise, uh, designing and implementing cloud connectivity is part of the CCNP enterprise. And so it's just like any of the other enterprise concentrations that you can use to earn your CCNP enterprise. My favorite one, SCATS, is part of the CCNP core track. And so if you've taken S-Core, the security core exam, you can take SCATS and you can earn your CCNP security. And then on the service provider side, that's where the designing and implementing Cisco service provider cloud network infrastructure fits in. And so these are one of the questions or a theme I kept seeing coming through was about the cloud track or the cloud certifications. With what we've done is we've recognized cloud is a part of every track, everybody's journey that's in there. And so we're trying we these certifications identify the cloud skills that fit into the tracks that are that are already in place and they go through. So you can tackle. And those training classes that Patrick uh, discussed will be eligible for CE credits for continuing education to renew as well. <clears throat> so resources abound for these. Um, we've put together a handful of links here, and these will come out in email after the fact. And so if you want to dive deeper into the blueprints, you want to kind of look at them, uh, do your study, do your prep to go set the certification, please check those out. We have community spaces up on learningnetwork.cisco.com where you can discuss these topics, ask questions. So our team, as well as uh, other certified individuals, instructors, partners, Everybody's really active on the learning network. So it's a great resource if you're studying for these as they go through. And then we have identified a few of the Cisco U training resources that are available today that touch on topics from these multi-cloud certifications. And so with that, I'm gonna hand it back to, to Matt to kind of close us down. I don't know if we've got time to squeeze in one or two questions. We certainly don't have a ton though. 
Let's, uh, you know, let's, let's burn through a few questions here the best we can. Um, we'll keep an eye on the clock best we can. And, you know, Hank, Joe, Patrick, if you need to roll on with your day to your next sessions and we run a little bit long over here in the Q and a portion, um, please feel free to, you know, continue on with your day. And thank you so much again for your time and sharing the wealth of your knowledge and information. Quick reminder. So the Q and R code QR code on the screen now will also take you to the Slido Q and a portion. And we do also have, as Hank alluded to, an open discussion thread for the session today over on the Cisco Learning Network. I shared a link to it in the chat. We'll be sure to share a link to it in the post event email as well, as well as where you'll find the recording for today's session, which by the way, also happens to be in that discussion thread on the Cisco Learning Network, as well as the Learning and Certification Cisco U YouTube channel. Uh, so we've got multiple places for you to find all of the information, but we'll be sure to share an email directly to that as well for everybody. Okay, so top question, prerequisites or prerequisite knowledge level recommended. Hank, would you like to take that one? Yeah, so I can dive into this. So like any of the Cisco certification exams that are out there, there are no prerequisites for concentration and specialist level exams. Um, so you don't have to take the CCNA or the relevant core exam to sit these certifications. Now there are, even though there are no prerequisite exams, there's obviously some things that we expect a candidate to know. Um, when we sit down to write the blueprints, um, our psychometricians, our specialists in learning, always remind us that we don't have to have a task for all of the things that should be assumed knowledge to do a later task. And so if you look at a blueprint and it says something like, hey, we expect you to be able to configure an IPsec VPN between a public cloud and a private data center, there's prerequisite knowledge that we expect you to have. We expect you to know what an IPsec tunnel is. We know expect you to know pre-shared keys and certificates and kind of the knowledge that goes through. And so from a prerequisite knowledge, my recommendation is look at the blueprint and anything that you can reasonably assume you would need to know to do the tasks on the blueprint is what we would, we would expect a minimally qualified candidate to have. However, the only thing you'll see questions on are what's on the blueprint. So even if we expect that you know something, if it's not explicitly on the blueprint, you're not going to be asked that. So, Perfect. Thank you so much, Hank. Uh, Joe, Patrick, any additional notes or should we keep moving through the, the open questions? No, I could. <clears throat> yeah, that was a good answer. Okay. And one of our live stream uh, viewers, uh, Marcus, Wanted to know if you're starting your career and aiming for a cloud focused path, which CCMP certification track would you recommend? Marcus proposes data center or enterprise, um, but would you guys be willing to offer your perspective on that? I mean, you could do any of them. It depends on how it depends on what you want to do in the cloud space. So as, as Hank said, it, it isn't a dedicated cloud track. Certainly things like data center get you to what building out something that, that could potentially become a cloud, you know, the, the old joke, the cloud is just someone else's computer. So data center gets you to building the, the compute and the network around that. Uh, enterprise, obviously we, we have that connectivity from uh, that concentration connectivity on building uh, between our, our on-prem uh, enterprise network and cloud-based services. Uh, but then if, if you're saying, you know, I want to do more security focused things, or I want to build more deep uh, networking infrastructure at a, at a cloud centric level, there, there's other tracks. It, it really depends. And there's no reason why you have to stay in one track either. You could get all three of these certifications. You could pick and choose the concentrations you want to assert the skills that you want to have um, in, in, in the career that you want to build. Um, so it, it really depends on, on you as an individual, what your focus is uh, and what you want to do with respect to the cloud. Thank you, Joe. And um, could we please remind folks how these certification offerings, these exams, uh, relate to the uh, CCMP program requirements as well? Can we just talk about, well, I can talk about it. Just a reminder for everybody, passing each of these exams will award you a specialist certification and will also count towards your 
full CCMP program requirements as well. So you combine a concentration exam with the um, same with the core exam from the same track. So in the case of ENCC, you combine that with EN core, and you also earn your full CCMP certification as well. That was a common question that came up. You know, how exactly do these relate to the CCMPs as well? Yeah. And, and the fact that it, the fact that it resets right your your certifications for another three years or, or whatever it is, yeah. Yes, thank you, Patrick. That's a great point. Both completing the learning paths, so the uh, authorized training for these courses that earn you continuing education credits, and successfully passing the exams help you to count towards your recertification requirements as well. Thank you, Patrick. All righty, I think that should wrap, take care of us for the verbal portion of the Q&A. Um, again, thank you so much to everybody for attending. We'll be sure to email all the follow-up resources. We hope this time was valuable for you. We hope that you are enthused about these exams and earning these specialist certifications. Um, Hank, Patrick, Joe, any parting thoughts before we wrap up the audio and the vi visual portion of the call? Be the first to be ENCC certified. That's right. You heard it yesterday. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Thank you so thank much, you. everybody. Thanks.